Adobe have just released a brand new noise reduction feature for both Adobe Camera Roll and Lightroom, and it is absolutely awesome. This is AI Denoise. Clever name. I wonder where they got that from. Anyway, regardless of the name, let's jump in and take a look at it because I really think you're going to enjoy it. I've got two images here. One is an ISO 4000 image from the St. Louis Basilica Cathedral in St. Louis. And the other one is a wildlife image that I photographed at Lowe's Bluffs. And we're going to take a look at how we can get really good noise reduction in Adobe Camera Raw without losing detail, too much detail, and without losing color. And that's the important part for me. A huge critical thing for me when it came to noise reduction in Adobe Camera Raw was the lack of color that I would receive after doing noise reduction. And when we look at noise, one of the most frustrating noises that we can have is color noise. And I'll demonstrate that to you now. So I'm gonna zoom in at 200% to this and we'll go right up here to this area and this space right here. Now we can see that the default settings that I have in here are set. Now the color is at 25 on the noise reduction. You will still have access to these even when the new denoise feature is here. You can go into the older settings by using these triangles to open them up and get all of those manual noise reduction and manual sharpening settings. Color noise is this area right up here. We're gonna see this little magenta mixed with a little bit of cyan with a little bit of green. That is the noise that we don't like. Luminance noise actually isn't that bad because luminance noise is what creates detail for us it's the color noise that is going to kill our milky way photographs and just about any high iso image that we have so if i even touch this just a little bit just to get rid of the the color noise that's happening up here you'll see that this band of blue tiles which is very distinctly uh, a key feature of the st louis basilica cathedral is the gold and blue that you see when you're in there I lose that blue completely. So let's see what happens if this denoise can retain that color while also reducing the luminance for me, the luminance noise for me in this image. So we're gonna go ahead and press the denoise feature. You're gonna see here when we press that, it says the result will be saved as a new DNG. Opening this up, we get a little bit of a, a document here that kind of shows us a preview. All we have is one slider that goes from one to 100. Now what you'll see here that even when this is at one, we get a really good color noise reduction that's happening here with what looks like a slight bit of sharpening that's happening to some of that noise there. So I wouldn't recommend that. I mean, if at any uh, rate you have to have that color noise reduced, this would probably be a good starting point, okay? But as we increase this, you'll see that we get some of this area here starts to get a little bit more smooth, which is in turn reducing the noise in the image. If I go all the way up to 100, we get that plastic look. I would not recommend an, uh, a noise reduction of 100, but let's say something like, let's say 28 or maybe even 30 on this image, I think looks pretty good because we get the best balance of both. We do want some noise in our image. I'm going to stress that and say it again. You do want some noise in your image because when you print it, that noise helps with the detail. And even when you print it, you won't even see that noise. It's really quite fantastic when you print your images. And if you aren't printing your images, you'll see that you can get away with quite a bit of noise in your images without losing any detail in the print. So we'll go ahead and press enhance. It says it's gonna take about 35 seconds. Let's go ahead and get a stopwatch going here and see about how long that's gonna take. Now I missed that by maybe three seconds because it took me a little while to get my stopwatch going, but it took 25 seconds on my phone in order to make that happen. And that's a lot better than me having to drive four and a half hours over to St. Louis to try and set this up with a tripod. <laughs> Okay, a lot of times I'm in here shooting with uh, with no tripod and shooting handheld because you can't have tripods in these places. Sometimes if you ask very nicely, you can, but I didn't really want to uh, annoy anybody, so I didn't bring my tripod. So I'm gonna go up here at about 200%. Again, on this image, zoom in here at about 200%. Again, you're gonna see that we have a new raw file that's being created, it's called a DNG file. So we have our original and we have our DNG. Now look at the difference of what's happening here. We have, the noise has been reduced very nicely here. And we also have detail retention as, as well as color retention here. And we've retained our color, we've retained our detail and it looks really good. Now I can take this further, like I said, by using even the sharpening here. So as I increase the sharpening, 
on this image that has had noise reduction to it, it looks really good. Increase that sharpening to about, let's say 15 or so. I typically will use the detail slider over the sharpening and get a little bit more heavy handed with the detail. And then I use the radius slider here to refine that because the radius is gonna say, okay, well, you have one pixel selected. This is gonna branch out to a little bit more, maybe a one and a half pixels. And then with the masking here, if I press Alt or Option, it'll show me in black what is not gonna get this sharpening at all and then anything is white will get the sharpening so i've just taken this image and very quickly reduced the noise increased the sharpening and i'm off to the races ready to edit this image and i could not do that quite as well with the old settings so if i were to use the old settings here and increase that luminance adjustment there and then increase my color noise to get rid of that color noise and then bring up my sharpening bring up my detail and bring up my radius and then even bring in my masking here very similar to what i just did on the other image Look at what I've lost in that image. I mean, you can see, look at what I've lost. I've lost detail, I've lost color in the older image. And this just isn't acceptable to me. That's why I typically wouldn't be using noise reduction in Adobe Camera Raw as much, especially on an image like this. So I'm very satisfied with this. This is an incredible feature that they've added. Now let's go ahead and take a look at this wildlife image. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom into 200% on this very pretty bird's face. Now this is an ISO 1000 image with the Sony A1. So I typically don't need to do a whole lot of uh, noise reduction on here because it is an ISO 1000 image and the A1 handles ISO very well. Now. With this one, I'm just gonna go ahead and press this denoise button. Let's first drop our sharpening and we'll go ahead and get rid of all of our adjustments here so we can start from scratch and see what the difference is gonna be using this noise reduction AI. So again, with this slider, what am I trying to do here? I'm trying to get the best balance of color noise reduction along with uh, and luminance noise reduction without losing detail and without losing color. So if I take this up too high, again, it's gonna be a blurry, jarbled mess. So let's just do something like, let's say 32. That might be pretty good for this one. And we'll press enhance. Now let's go ahead and zoom in on this guy here again to 200% on that face. Let's look at the noise reduced version versus the regular version here and see what we got going on, okay? So with the noise reduction, we the AI noise reduction, we got a significant increase in detail while also losing that color noise, which to me is incredible. Even just that alone would be perfect enough for me that I probably wouldn't need to do too much as far as sharpening is concerned, but I will increase the sharpening to about, you know, 10 or so. And then again, increase this radius here. If I start to get artifacting like this, I'll bring that down, maybe increase that detail a little bit. And then again, use the masking here to block out the uh, stuff that you don't want, like the sky in the background until it turns almost black so we don't get any of that sharpening on the background. Now, one of the things that I wanna look at here is just the rest of the bird. Look, look at the feet here and how we have really nice detail in those feet. 200% is almost a little unrealistic as far as how we're gonna see something. That's being a little picky. So let's go to 100%. We'll do the same thing on this guy and see what we get as a result. So my typical noise reduction, like I said, would start very, very mildly in Adobe Camera Raw, which is an increase in color noise and then a slight boost in my luminance noise reduction. Okay, it's so like maybe something like this, okay? And then uh, probably bring that up a little bit more to the medium there. That's about where that would be. And then I would do, again, the same sharpening here to about that, okay? Uh, that's about what I would do because it's the only thing I could get away with. And then I would have to go into Photoshop and further sharpen with some of my tools in Photoshop. Now I'm off to a much better start with this image right here. Look at the amount of detail that is there, especially the glisten in the eye. It is wonderful detail that we just don't get when we look at the original. Now it does look like my image got slightly darker with this noise reduction for some reason. I actually like it. I think it's filled in those shadow areas very well where I think I went a little heavy handed here because I needed to in order to see some of the detail in those wings. But along with that noise reduction, it looks like we got a slight uh, darkening in, in that area. If I needed to fix that or correct it, I would just come over here to my shadows and maybe increase that a little bit more in those shadow areas. And one thing to note is that it does create a new raw file. So it's gonna create that raw file in the same place that you had the original raw file saved. So this 
This is the original raw file. This is the XMP sidecar data for that raw file. And this is the enhanced noise reduction. Now you'll see that this is a 216 megabyte file versus a 60.5 megabyte file. So there is almost a, you know, three to four times increase in size. So just know that that's going to happen. Again, here is the original raw file for the cathedral image. And here is the noise reduction image. 226 megabytes versus 70 megabytes. So again, three, 3.5 ish uh, increase in size. So that is going to happen. And you know, knowing that is important because then when you take this file into Photoshop and hand it off to Photoshop, as you increase your layers, your PSD files will more than likely become PSB files because they will be bigger than two gigabytes. These are just some things you wanna keep in mind when you're using this feature. At the end of the day, Adobe has knocked it out of the park with this AI noise reduction. Now, I'm not sure if you're familiar with how where we were in, say, Adobe Camera Raw that came with CS6. That noise reduction was basically a Gaussian blur that would just blur the junk out of your image and wouldn't retain detail, and it would mess up everything in the process. So we didn't really use it. We have some incredible advancements in our noise reduction now at the raw level that you're seeing here in this new version of Adobe Camera Raw. So update it immediately. I think you're really going to enjoy it. Again, this is also going to be in Lightroom. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this. I do sincerely appreciate it. If you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing. I like to take very difficult things in Photoshop and make them seemingly simple so that you can use them in your workflow today.